Teleport. So they must do it for Days of Our Lives, where like one writer does an episode a week, and they have like five writers. It's the only way it makes any sense. I, I wanted to help out a friend. You ever hear of feathers? I, I, you ever hear of one winged like angels? That's amazing. I never would have guessed twelve thousand. Imagine doing twelve thousand of anything. Like that's just unbelievable. Hello. Oh, by the way, it's on season uh, fifty. <laughs> so what? Each season's Heaven. like five hundred episodes. Church in the slums. I. Hmm? Or more like a couple hundred. But that's still let's insane. let's let's do that El Matho. No, I'm Aaron. So, go away, Aaron. Aaron. So let's just say it's twelve thousand. Twelve thousand five hundred divided by fifty. No. Divide. So you saved me, huh? Why? Not really. Why can't I do anything? Hello. Like 250. So it's literally like every weekday. Like every weekday with almost without fail. It's like, hey, we did this thing. It's amazing. Do you think Thank they just so get much, together, Aaron. like, and I'm just back. pump, like, I a month's worth so out in like two weeks where they're like, alright, this oh, dumb episode's it? done, okay, the next no, no, no. one. Like, how do the actors even learn their lines? Like, they like they have to be reading it off a teleprompter at all times, like, no! What is that? Jackie, you what cheated on me! But Line. <laughs> like, man. So, uh, this scene that's happening right here, this is a scene where I really wish you were done with the remake. <laughs> Stop. Don't step on the flowers. Excuse me? Uh, ironically enough, this is the scene that I just ended earlier today, where you fall down and Eris is like, those flowers are okay. Dude, you just fight, um, you don't see a lot of flowers in No, I literally stopped right there. That's, that's what I'm here. They only grow here. I can't wait to push a bunch of barrels on the Torinos, guys. I know that probably won't be a thing. Midgar's full of flowers? Your wallet's full of money. Thanks, Kingdom Hearts character. Midgar full of flowers. Wallet full of money. This particular interaction is kind of bad, Kingdom Hearts. Never thought of it that a way. A little bit. Well, just the way he, like, the Zack moved, I was like, that's so Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> it looked like, and like... Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if the same The way they do the eyes like. looks exactly the same as, like, Sora. Like, the way they, like, um... I don't know, just... Pop. That's me. I just talked to this girl and I'm like, hey, see ya. Yeah, I could talk to her, but uh, I just want to move on. I want to get done with this, because Sector... Wait, is this Sector 4 or Sector 5? Well, whatever. This, slums, uh, this part's boring. For some reason, like, in the marketplace... They really pat it out for some reason. I guess just to make a connection with Eris and Zack, because that is a plot thing. But uh, it's really weird. Do you like how in the in the original game, if you don't go back to Gangaga and like see those very important like scenes and meet Zack's parents, you would like miss out like a big part of yeah. the game. Like you know who Zack is because of the um, the pudding clouds broken mind back together part but uh you really don't know how he met his end or anything about him and like I think it's really cool that you can just it's completely optional but it is pretty crazy that something that important is well the meat is the meat is end one you have to go back to the basement at Nibelheim like later in the game but to learn about like I guess Zack and Eris you have to go to his parents I'm pretty sure yeah I think I wonder what the speedrun of the remake's at right now. You can skip cutscenes, but the game is so linear and scripted and sort of... Especially the slow walking mandatory parts. It has to be like a good... 8, 10 hours. I mean, the original one's like 7-something. Seven, seven well, the original is also a full game. Rip! Rip! Rip. Let's see. Activating combat, conflict resolved.
Let's see if it's actually up here. Oh yeah, there we go, the remake. Oh, it says no run submissions until April 20th. Wonder why. Mm -hmm. They have they literally have an embargo on it. On speedrun.com. Maybe it's just so the the leaderboard isn't uh, cluttered with worthless runs. You know what, that's fair. One. Yeah. Because, like, if someone got the game a couple days early and they just beat it real quick and was like, here's my 20-hour run, you know, and it's like, okay. Plus, not only that, like, if you were actually the mod, you'd be like, oh, I gotta watch this, you know? No way. This music, though. Bum, bum, bum. Yeah, I don't know what happened to this game in terms of music. And they they just did Ares' theme. But, like, everything else is so generic. Did you ever do... Uh, I guess it's just that mid-2000s edgy. They're just like, can't have those iconic, catchy, and good tunes. You gotta have this and the battle theme. Oops. Zach, the marketplace is this? Oof. Oh, sorry. That, that's <laughs> that's how I played uh, while I'm grinding, just to get a uh, move Dude, on. Dude, I literally don't care. Like, if there's, like, a part where you're just walking, by all means, use it. I wish I could use it on some games I play. Oh, uh, speaking of the PSP, did you did you play Third Birthday, or was I imagining maybe watching someone on stream? I don't... Like, on oh, LPs? Oh, I, I, I never LPed it. No. Okay. I, don't I, think, must, I must have watched someone stream I don't think something. I ever even finished Third Birthday, because the game's... Horrible rip. Well, it's not like it's it's just one of those things where it's like it's a decent game, but man, first Parasite Eve game and uh, at that point like seven or eight years, and it's just generic third person shooter with weird gimmick about a uh, going through time or wormholes or something. And you're just like, well, it's not called Parasite Eve, so you can't get mad, but I really wish this was a Parasite Eve game. That's why, like, I don't want anything to be rebooted or to get next things in the series after it's been dead a while, because it's just like... Yeah, I don't know what was happening with mid 2000s Square Enix, but they did so much weird stuff, like Samurai Legend Musashi, um, this game, Dirge of Cerberus, Third Birthday, where they just make sequels of games that people really like, but they make them weird and nothing like the original, and they're just like, what? Are you telling me people don't like this game and it didn't sell that well? I honestly feel like I could play this game if it didn't have the, uh, slot thing. I just really, just I watching it, I really don't like it. I don't mind the slot thing, and there are material later on that does influence it a bit, if you want something in particular. Um, also something that you can do that's kind of cool, is if you're in a late game place where it is a high battle level, but you have a, a, a loadout where you can't die very easily, or at all, you can just idle the game, <laughs> and you'll get some level ups. Hmm. Now I think there's sort of a cap. Um, I don't ex exactly know what's going on, but... Oh yeah, I have to do this stupid thing. Alright. Have you seen that kid? Is that it? Like, you literally have to, like, I saw this kid run. Yeah, this, this entire part's finding that stupid kid. Oh, I guess I just tried to walk out of this. I wasn't paying attention. You know the slum scene? How amazing it is? You gotta, you can't have that, you gotta have this. Question of the part, besides FF7, what is your favorite video game soundtrack? There is no wrong answer. Uh, unless it's like, Bubsy 3D. Yeah, for me it's probably... Super Mario RPG. I was gonna say Mario RPG, obviously Saga Frontier. The only thing taking Saga Frontier down is it's much longer and there's a lot more, um, like... I wasn't paying attention again. Baroque style things. Right, I guess I'm I, not the one who's running away. At this point, I talked to him. Uh, Sonic Adventure 1. I wanna fly! Ha! Do, 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 do. Like Saga that is, Frontier is really high. Yep, said that one. Uh, Castlevania 4, actually. 
Castlevania Bloodlines, actually. I really like Symphony of the Night as well. You know, yep. Uh, Resident Evil Director's Cut Greatest Hits. No. <laughs> uh, I don't think Mega Man 2 is the best Mega Man game by any means, but I do think it has the best soundtrack. I mean... Damn, Mega Man 2 yeah. soundtrack. Mega Man X also has a 10 out of 10. Oh, I dude, I... When, when, remember when CIB was open? I actually... I played that soundtrack at least once a week. If not, like, two or three times a week, because it's just so easy to have on. I remember when we had a store that was running, and I had to play music and stuff. Good times. Now I just sit there in silence until the phone rings 45 times in a row. Ah, yeah. Yeah! That's that. That's it. Now I'm gonna go cry. No, but uh, you know what game I got the hankering? I watched the ABGN episode of the Aladdin Deck Enhancer, which, by the way, I will say, um, I, I only have two or three more episodes to watch all the ABGN, and I feel like there was a period. Oh, I was like, don't you have one? And you literally have a box one. Yeah, but they're like not even expensive. Not really. Um, they were like, it was one of those things where they like found like a billion of them in like a warehouse or something. So they like all of a sudden became everywhere. Anyway, so there was a period of time like uh, after he made the movie where like there was definitely like a lull where it was like his heart wasn't in it. But I feel like over the last year or two, it really is back to being like very good. Like he just did, I watched the most recent one, which was uh, Mortal Kombat ripoffs. And I felt like I was watching uh, like any old episode. Like I, I, it was like not a bunch of BS. He does a little bit in terms of uh, like weird uh, skits, but it's nothing like any other YouTuber. It's like 10 seconds and it's like, okay, whatever, you know. But, uh, yeah, it's still good. I forget what my major point was. I think my brain just melted through I'm, my ears. But this part's making my brain melt. Why did they add this? <laughs> oh, Aerith. Hey, and Zach's wallet got stolen by some dumb kid. Uh, I think I was going to say before, before I got into AVGN. It was something about something. Everyone go back in the video and tell me what part I had an aneurysm. Uh, That's just the Brosman bloodline. Soundtracks? Speaking. Was it soundtracks or was it something after that? Oh, yes, actually. A lot in deck enhancer. Boom, we're back on, babies. Oh, yeah, let's go. Every time I see gameplay for Fantastic Dizzy, I'm like, I'm gonna do that for an LP. But then I'm like, to beat that game, you need to get all 255 friggin' oh. stars. All of them. And it's a really hard game that you get, like, four uh, lives to do. And I'm like, man. Because it would be... I would be so proud if I was like, Fantastic Dizzy for the Genesis. Let's go. I know where everything is. I know where everything goes. But I feel like I'm going to have to write out a freaking, like, like uh, chart to be like, do this, do this. You know what I mean? Like, I just... And it's a childhood game, too. But holy crap. If I didn't have to get all the stars, I'd be like, yeah, that's fine, I'll beat it. But you have to get all the damn stars. And also, that's one of those games where, like, there's no invincibility frames. So you can die in literally one second if you, like, fall into an enemy wrong. And that is no fun. You know what game I wish was a little easier? I'd love to do a LP of is Haunting... Uh, starring Polter guy, because that game is very. That game is like if you're like, tell me the most Sega Genesis thing in the world. I'd be I like, never even heard of that. I'd be like, yeah, I'll show. I, I think I have it. I'll show it to you real quick. Uh, yeah, right here. Don't listen to go. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I promise. Did I? No. I didn't touch anything. Is this one haunting? Starring Polter guy. It's the one where you go around. Oh, I've seen that game. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you go, you go around. Uh, pretty much, it all takes place in this one house, and your goal is to like inhabit certain uh, like things around the house and scare the family and make them leave the house. And I don't know if it's one of those games that actually has like like an ending, ending, but it's like about as unique as possible. And if you were like, like I said, if you were like, what's the most Sega Genesis thing in the world? I'd be like, Haunting by Poltergeist. Like, all the sound effects are like, <laughs> you know how the Genesis does. Also, that game was made by EA. Yep. Man, EA used to be cool. 
for like a couple years. I mean, EA was so cool that that Sega was like, "Hey, pay us so you can, so we can make your, uh, so we can make your games into cartridges. Pay us a lot of money." And yeah, EA was, was like, like, "No," and they made their own freaking yeah, cartridges. It was something ridiculous. Like I think it was like twenty or thirty dollars per cart. It's like holy crap. Yeah. And EA was like, "No." And then Tengen was like, "No." And Codemasters, which makes Fantastic Dizzy, was like, no. Yeah, dude, Activision, now we're talking literally almost 40 years ago, but Activision was the best video game company during the Atari days. It has the most games that are oh, awesome. Yeah, games that are actually good. Kaboom, Stampede, uh, River Raid, uh... Did I, did I say Stampede? There's a bunch of them. Laser Blast. There's a lot of... I mean, there's so many good ones that you could put all the Activision cartridges because they looked, you know, a specific way. And you'd be like, wow, this is even better than, than like, Atari-made games. Like, they just... They ruled, dude. All right, this part's... Oh, uh, Pitfall. Over. Of course, Pitfall. Nice camera angle. I think that's something emulation-wise. See ya! This should be music playing in elevators, but it, it's but it's only like one step above. Well, I'm saying they should put music like this in elevators. That would be a little. Oh boy, it would really spice it up. I was, <laughs> I when when I was driving earlier, I was like going through the radio and like I would I just had it on seek and like one of the stations was like playing like slow smooth jazz. It was like. And I was like, who listens to this? Hey, remember oh, yeah. the actual music? They, I, they can do it when they want to. I have the sheet music for this. And uh, I have like a little book with all, a lot of FF songs. And this is too big brain for my hands to play on the piano. Dude, in the book is Eyes on Me. And... Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna get good enough to play that one day, dude. Eyes on Me is a song that really should be just so cheesy and bad, but like every time I listen to that song, I don't know if it's nostalgia or whatever. I'm just like, this song is amazing. <laughs> uh, the one guy I watch, uh, Court Cordelium, uh, who does FF8 a lot. Every time he gets to that part in the in the thing, he like everyone sings along with it, and I'm like, that's based. <laughs> It just, it just is what it is. It's awesome. And it's like, in a game with literally no voice acting, all of a sudden it's like... Ah, oh, it's so good. The, uh... I was learning the opening song for F7, you know, do 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 And, like, it's fun, but, man, all the music in... Did you put it on right? This game is freaking difficult for me. It should be fine. Yeah. It looks great. Yeah. Thank you, Zach. And that's the story of how she got that in her hair. I think the Eris uh, interactions are pretty harmless in this game. Obviously, it has to be, like, a plot thing where they get a, a connection going on. Let's look around here a little bit. I also little. really like, uh, neither of us really paying attention, but, uh... Oh my god, that thing, yes! <laughs> so, but I like the idea that, um, when Eris meets Cloud Maybe. and she says something about, um, happy? repay in, in one day, it was originally Zack's, like, you know, initial encounter with her that, like, sort of changed her to that piece. way, and I, I like that. But, they're not normal. They get some kind of special surgery. Don't they? So they say. I will say. The animal is best. This heiress seems Don't okay. The heiress in like. Those obviously, Advent Children. Things. You know, she's yeah. dead, of course, but yeah. they made her to be like a literal martyr, like a god. Yeah, like basically just Wait, a name huh? or a god or whatever. And this seems to be in the middle because the original FF7 heiress is like Scary. quite over the top and annoying. They like, it's not a Yuffie level, but it's, like, also, like, would be, like, come on, 
on, you know, like that kind of thing. Like actually, and it seems like the remake sorry. one, it's like a little bit more towards what it originally was, but I'm not sorry. quite. Which, by the way, I really like how they did Cloud in the remake. I think it's, I think it's awesome. I think the main three, Tifa, Eris, and Barrett, are like exactly what I wanted, because Cloud has like. He hasn't had the humor yet that I've seen, but it's like getting to the point. The face. Uh, yeah, like he made some. He, he made like a like a like a you pun. Like it wasn't like something where he like laughed, but he did it recently in yeah. the game from it. And there's some I things where he like kind of jokes around in his sort of jackassy uh, way later on. Thank God, because the Kingdom Hearts cloud oh. is like insufferable. <laughs> yeah. Killer of the sky, right? Or even Advent Children, where it's just and like, I've heard about you. The heiress, uh -huh. the only good Final uh, Fantasy character in Kingdom Hearts is Sid. Everyone else, especially Eris and Cloud, are just admit, unbearable. Yeah. Things haven't been normal at all. And I'm really Sephiroth glad. Sephiroth is just Sephiroth. If, if I had to play the remake and the whole time he was what like, you, I'm. How's your life going? You know, I'd be like, oh God. <laughs> the Kingdom Hearts and Advent Children era cloud was the day. Dark Ages. Even in this game, Cloud is... I mean, you obviously see him as, like, a very newcomer Shinra grunt. But he's pretty alright. He's not moody, he's just kind of, like, a kid. Thank goodness that they, like... I don't know if they, like, talked to the original people or played the damn game and realized that he was, like, you know, whatever. But, like, thank God. On my way. I'm sorry, but duty calls... Well, I guess I should get going then. Nice date. Will I see you again? Nah, of babe. Course. I hope that your friend's okay, Zach. Huh? You talk in your sleep. Yeah. It'll be fine. Okay. I know that now. No, oh, Eris, see ya. Beautiful, beautiful date where you walked up to the same place that you do with Cloud. There's not too much to the slums. It's pretty much a crap hole. I guess that's true. Hey, you want to act? But, 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 Eris' mom's house is like god tier yeah. right next to the slums. Right next to it. Do you think all the people living in the slums right next to her are like, what the hell? Like, yeah. this house, like, not only is it bigger than the entire it's, slums... It seriously is such a nice house. And it has, like, this huge, amazing garden, like, right next to it. You think all the people there would be like, what the hell? Like, what's this lady doing? <laughs> it, can you, do, you, do you see Eris' house in this game? I don't think so. I haven't completed the full story yet, but I don't think so. Ooh. Ah! Oh. Uh, hi. <laughs> you haven't got to it yet, but uh, when I got to Eris' house in the remake, it was such a like nostalgic trip for me. Like, just seeing that place in 3D was just so cool to me. They did such a good job. I'm, I'm taking my sweet time. I know I still have a lot to do, but... Luckily, I guess... Oh, by the way, uh, that nail bat side quest they were talking about before we started, uh, you haven't got there. That's the side quest in the place that you're about to get to. Right? Oh, cool. Yeah, because every time before I leave an area, I make sure that there's no, like, things, side quests that I see. Because I figure I want to do it all. What? Now grunts have one wing? Yeah, so, uh, they try to, they go into it a little bit more, but Hollander is, like, taking Genesis's and in genetic data, and, like, either injecting it into grunts, or, like, making their, their copies, like, clones. So, it's stupid. <laughs> cool. I remember these guys. Dude, the... These guys show up way later in the remake, and they are such a pain in the butt. I think that even normal bad guys... I don't know if I'm just playing the game poorly, or, like, not leveling up enough, even though I'm fighting every fight I can. I don't even, Can you even run away from battles in the remake? Yeah, if you, uh, just stand... It's sort of like this game, where if you just stand at the edge of the... Okay, well, I haven't. I haven't run away from it, but I think even normal or normal battles are, like, hard as hell. 
The only ones that are easy are like the little friggin' like rats and stuff. Everything else is like not easy. Yeah. Throughout the remake, I never thought that the game was like super difficult. I never actually died one time, but there's a lot of times. I haven't I died yet either, but like I have to constantly heal in yeah. like the, the battles. And I think stuff. that's just how the game's sort of designed. I don't think you're really expected to, just like the original game where you have to take damage. Uh, I think in this game, like, just healing and whatever is just sort of natural. <laughs> da -da -da. Imagine if this was the battle theme. Instead of... Uh, I don't even remember what it sounds like already. And I've been listening to it for 20 hours. Oh, it's not? <laughs> I, like, literally have not been paying attention to the normal battle theme. It's not. It's just some generic thing. I like how sometimes with this game they go full nostalgia and sometimes they're like, yeah, but we got this new thing. I like in the remake where when Barrett does the battle uh, victory fa fanfare. Pretty cute. Yeah, the weird thing is you never played the game, but uh, there's a character in Final Fantasy XV that does the same exact thing. So, uh, like, when they did it again with Barrett, like, it's a cool moment, and Barrett's... I really like Barrett in the remake. He's probably the best character in the game. Um, but, like, when he did that, I was I like, oh, Promptu and 15 you. did this, too. Oh, uh, okay. So, yeah, me not knowing that, it's like, yeah. well... I'm not really sure myself. Hey, I have a wing. Can you comment on it? At times I feel as if my mind is mired in fear. Comment on my wing, senpai! But Zen, comment on his one wing, no comment on his buster happens, sword. Because that's... I am Geo as a character. My honor. As long as I so why are you... So, the like, buster, the so my thing is, like, why are you still, like, cool to him to the point where you're not, like, trying to kill him? Because he, like, literally oh, killed his mom for no reason? Suffering. Well, we'll see what... We'll go into those events a little bit more. Okay, cause like... So now you're helping him, and he like, killed his mom. Just... Uh, the the problem is, is that if this game was better paced, and they had more sections with you interacting with Enviel, and soldier uh, members in general, you could feel like more of a connection, cause obviously they, they go about it in a, the wrong way. Where it's obvious that Zack and Angel like knew each other for a while, but they don't show it. They just tell you it happens. It's exactly like the Star Wars prequels with uh, Anakin and uh, Obi Wan, where they don't ever feel like friends or mentor and student. They're just like people you barely know because they just tell you that they know each other. I like how uh, in like Episode Two, because like obviously Episode One they're kids and they just met, but I think in Episode Two and then maybe Three. Like, the way they go about it is, like, the laziest way possible, where it's, like, they'll do some little mission, and they'll be like, hey, it's just, like, the time where we got yeah. stuck on that planet, huh? There's a... Yeah, <laughs> remember that thing we did? And you're probably talking about the elevator scene, where they're just like, oh, uh, remember this yeah. thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think that's the start of three. Yeah, it might like, be two, I forget. I think it's two. But it's, like, the laziest way possible of just being, like... Oh, you know what? That reminds me of this. And it's like, like oh every God. Every time that I watch episode four now... It's literally and, Family Guy, like, level, like, for that, where it's yeah. just like, remember this? Um, like, every time I watch episode four now, and old Obi-Wan is just like, Anakin was a good friend. And you watch episode two and three, and you're like, they were not good friends. That's my favorite <laughs> meme. <laughs> they, they didn't even like each other. Your father... Killed a bunch of freaking children, and then tried to knock me into a bunch of lava. He was a good friend. <laughs> it's so stupid. And like, that's why when you retcon, of course, st the original Star Wars when it came out was not called Episode Four. Once Empire Strikes Back came out, then they called it Five. But the original one was not called Episode Four: New Hope. It was just Star Wars. It might have been called Star Wars: New Hope, but it was not Episode Four. Yeah, it wasn't Empire Strikes Back. Just called Empire Strikes I Back. I think you're correct. I might be wrong, but I know for an absolute fact. Hey, Ojo, I know for an absolute fact that it was just called Star Wars or Star Wars: New Hope. And it's just funny to be like, hey, I have this thing, 
Because, like, dude, it, that just goes to show you the prequels again. When you make a prequel, it has to be done so perfectly that when you look at the original source material, you're not like, oh, that's lame. Like, what if they took Cloud in this prequel and made him, like, so lame? You'd, like, look at Cloud differently. You'd be like, oh, yeah. God, he's so lame. And that's why I run into it's the so hard. hard. It's but, like, so hard. It's so hard to make a good prequel, and, like, the basis of a prequel is just, like, it's not necessary to tell. All right, so there's a bunch of stuff that you can do. Like, there's some like, like machines that you can go around and mess with, but it's just a waste of time. <laughs> so we're just gonna get Hojo and get out of here. Hey, nice ponytail, nerd. Hey, I know this place. It's floor sixty-seven or something. Yeah, Hoju's lab is... Oops, it's like 67 or 69. Kind of sounds like how I would expect his voice. Yeah, it's not bad. The Hojo, um... The way that they do the Hojo in the remake is really good. His voice acting and, like, the way he looks and the way he emotes is really, really good. Just pitiful, I say. And again, going back to the graphics thing, if Genesis. you could make graphics like the FF7 remake and not have it take a million effing years, then of course I'd be fine with it. But I'm saying I'll sacrifice graphics for time yeah. and for gameplay. Like, remove, remove six months of development time just for just slightly worse graphics. My friend, I feel like it would be freaking cool. more are than no that. Dreams, no honor remains. I mean, obviously assuming the that they like didn't the start bomb. completely yeah, over, you know. The and dude, whenever you go, like, it's so... There's some environments Shut in the up, remake that are so breathtaking, and you, like, floor. look at the amount of work Where that they put into it, like, you just imagine every object. They had to model it, they had to texture it, they had to post-process it, um... But and it's just, it's so much work when you think about it. And yeah. it's like, no wonder this took so long. The, uh... The last act is when, you're, when you're up above the city and you're looking down, like, on the, what is that, Sector 4, before the, before the second reactor, it's just like, holy crap, when you can, like, see, like, all, like, the shanties yeah. and whatever. This like, isn't it's crazy. A, this isn't a spoiler, but when you're about to enter Shrima HQ, the sense of scope and scale is ridiculous. Like, I was, I just stood the there for, like, two minutes and just looked goddess. around. I'm like, man, they put what is so mean, much work into this. And it's like, at, least. at one end, I'm like, I, I really respect it. But on the other end, it's like, well, they could have made the game longer. Right, instead of just or, having those McGraths. Yeah. I'm just Something saying, that you look at for a minute and I'm, then move on. I'm just saying, I'd be fine if it was, like... This level graphs. My soul. Like, man, Last of Us 2, I just... I wish someone would just tell me the story at this point, because I'm never going to play the damn game at this point. Like, just be like, here's what happens. And I'd be like, okay, whatever. But it's like... I have a feeling that Last of Us 2 is going to have a terrible story. All that all that time, just to be like, hey, when you walk along this hallway, it looks so good. It's like, dude, make it a play now. Just make it a play and just put it up on stage and I'll watch it. Like, I don't care. Like, damn. You can do this. Trust me. Like, son, why you gotta take so long? <laughs> Stop! Come back! Oh, okay. I wish I had a... I think I wasn't paying oh, attention when I watched this cutscene, but... Aerith? I thought Angel was just leaving and being like, uh, can you can do you it. Later? There's no reason why I'm not helping you. I have some company. Heh. <laughs> So weird thing about this game, you have Ifrit, and then you have, um, you have Bahamut, and then here you have Neo Bahamut, or Fury Bahamut, I forget what it's called. It's like, why don't you use someone else that isn't Bahamut? <laughs> Bahamut only! They need to bring back some of the older ones. Or just bring, just, uh, retcon some of the FF8 ones in. 
make it like uh, bring back Quetzalcoatl. Or my personal favorite, Doom Train! Wow. Absolute blown out. I'm Bahamut! No! See ya. Where'd all those guys with wings go? Literally what he says. <laughs> wait, what, wait, did they explain why Angel has a wing now, or is it just like, when you're cool, you <laughs> get a wing? Angel, even though they say Angel. Oh, Angel, my bad. Wait, so is that a thing? Like, do they explain how they, uh... They explain it later, but basically, uh, Hollander makes some experiments... And Genesis is the failed version of those experiments. And um, Genesis is the perfect version. Because I think Genesis, the difference is that they inject... Wait, Gen wait, which is the perfect version? Uh, Angeal's the perfect version. Oh, okay. Because I think Genesis was... They in injected Genova cells into a newborn. But because of that, it just like it was worse overall and like his genes are susceptible to degrading which we'll see later but Angeal I think was like the fetus was uh Genova celled so when it was like growing up in his mom uh, it was a more perfect version of that huh So we're sort of alluding to the fact that Sephiroth's curious about his own birth. Uh, yeah, Sephiroth doing research is never going to end with a good thing. Oh, I'm just researching some it's stuff. It's also stupid for Shinra to just be like, oh, just go catch this scientist that knows a lot about you and could potentially... I can't speak. Potentially uh, let you know about your birth. All right. So we're done. <laughs> we are done, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye, sheets and other things. Uh. Bye.